Hello everybody and welcome back to the building of the Falcon. I'm about to start the process of covering the fuselage. You can see in the background that the tail feathers have been covered. At the moment they're not glued together um, but they've been covered and they've had three thin down coats of dope and that's got them prepped for the decoration paintwork that's going to go on them in the future. In terms of the fuselage the cable runs are secured in, at least in the rear section. This section that haven't been finalised, I have um, prepared and completed the servo block. And this will go onto a sliding rail which is inside the fuselage and I can move it back and forth until I find the sweet spot regarding the CG. In terms of prepping, getting ready for covering, the frame, wherever the fabric is to be attached with the iron, has had two coats of Mod Podge. In between each coat, when it's dried down, I've given it a rub down because it tends to lift the grain a little bit on the balsa. It acts very much like a sand and sealer. So the main part here which is all sheeted is being coated but I've only actually put the Mod Podge in the areas where I intend fixing the fabric. So how am I going to tackle this? Well off camera actually I've already covered this rear under fin. That's been done because the sequence that I'm going to cover it in I think is going to go something like this. So the bottom section will be covered first. Then I'll apply two, the two sides up to this point. So it'll be up to there, around here. And then I anticipate actually doing this front section separately. And the reason for that is I don't want the joint to appear down the middle between one wrapped round. That's my intention, but I have found actually that the polyester covering, you can actually pull it around quite a lot. And to my surprise, I was able to cover the Junkmeister, which I built in only two pieces, round quite a torturous coal area. So that's the intention to there, and then that one will be done in as a separate piece. I've got to hand a pair of sharp scissors, which are only ever used by me for cutting the fabric. A brand new blade in this knife. And I'm just beginning to play with these. These are crimping scissors. They're actually sold as crimping scissors to a scale of one quarter um, for scale models. They're not expensive actually but the intention was to buy them and use them perhaps if I was putting the, um, the tape on wing ribs in the future for any scale builds. But they also have the advantage that when you cut the fabric it stops the edges from freeing and getting those irritating uh, pieces of um, lint all over the place. So I'm going to experiment with using these when I'm setting up and doing the covering. I'm going to do much of this through time lapse because it's a laborious process and it takes some time. But I will pause if there are certain things I think I need to share with you and I'll, I'll put a video insert in the middle of the time lapse sections. So let's get cracking. I'm just pausing the time lapse there because I just thought what I'm doing here is I'm starting in the middle and working out in both directions. I've tacked all the way along the length to pull it taut that way, but then I'm just applying the iron and moving outwards. I find that gives a much better wrinkle free finish to the covering. So 
I'll, we'll switch back to time lapse. But I, as I was doing it, I just realised what I was doing, just automatically doing it and not thinking really. And I thought it would be worth sharing with people if you've never done this before. Of course, this would apply to any cover, any fabric covering or any covering really. But um, when working with this, you can see there without applying any heat shrink dope, it's a nice finish already. It's nice and taut. There's very little by way of wrinkles. I'm just pulling it as I go along. So back to the time lapse. I will have to cut here with the undercarriage. It's about to be a little bit awkward, but I'll I'll carry on and we'll see how how we go. There we have the bottom covering applied. Now what I need to do is to trim this off as neatly as I can and lap it over. And then before I actually apply the side panels, I'll apply some full strength dope or perhaps even Mod Podge along the seal line. I think I might go with the dope actually. And then let that dry. And then when I actually put the side panels on, I'll reactivate that dope with the use of the iron. Onwards and upwards. So here we have it. This is the bottom panel applied to the model. It's been uh, ironed on, but it hasn't been shrunk yet. I think I'll shrink when I do the whole lot together, when the whole fuselage is completed. Next thing to do is to think carefully about the remaining sequence of panels. Let's get to it. Well, after having a think about this, I actually think I'm going to go for covering the fuselage all in one go. Well, one side in one go without having a separate upper panel. So we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't work out, it'll have to come off again. Back to the time lapse. That's this side essentially done. That wrinkle there. It's going to come out with a heat gun, I'm certain. I've pulled it round here, but I'm going to have to put some sort of cut in this area to get it round the windshield. Perhaps a couple of half circles of fabric around the undercarriage. But I think that'll look okay. Let's press on. I think it's worth showing this section, and it demonstrates how effective this technique is, because I've been able to pull that round and use the iron to stick it down with the Mod Podge underneath in one go. I thought I was going to have to cut out a piece here and piece it in, but no, it's gone on, it's stuck on, and once the cellulose dope is added, it's going to be a really strong, strong bond. I'll have to work on all the cuts, but really I'm very, very happy with that. Um, can't complain, just goes to confirm my belief that this is a very effective covering. I've used far worse coverings in terms of um, film. Some of them have been awful. Um, obviously, Solartex was great stuff to use, but you can't get your hand on it for love and money. It's no longer produced. Oratex is a very good substitute but it's also a very expensive substitute, especially when you're talking about a big model like this. So I hope that's useful. The next time you see it, I'll be ready to uh, slap some dope on it, I think. Bye for now. And there we have it. Model covered. Uh, no dope applied yet, but I'm pleased with that. Um, 
couldn't have really gone much better, to be honest with you. Uh, onwards and upwards. Let's get out there flying if you can. If you can't, let's get creative and get some building done.